so welcome back guys i think today we are going to start a very new topic okay it's called uh, javascript all right so i know most of you guys have already been familiar with certain concepts in your uh, uh, in learning when you are part of your education through your engineering or any other degree but at the same time uh, it's a very very important topic okay uh, in order to become a full stack developer this programming language and mastering this programming language is very beneficial okay let's get deep dive into it and let's understand some concepts basic concepts today uh, related to javascript mm -hmm. as a programming language so now you might have heard uh, javascript okay um, javascript what it does and how it does you might have seen uh, as a web programming or a web development what it holds in itself okay now just to give you a brief background what is javascript javascript is the most popular programming language now this comes up like oh, how do you say this as a most popular okay there are certain things certain surveys have been done by stack overflow uh, i know that's that's a website go to website for any queries that you ask for any technology related questions and those um, a stack overflow website will conduct a survey every year in order to see that what technologies are in demand and what are the development community trying to learn in this current situation okay current world or uh, uh, as we speak all right now i'll go back i'll go to that why this is a most pro popular programming language in a second but prior to that let's understand what is this javascript is javascript is again one of the core technologies as a part of world wide web what it means is like in for a web development or a world wide web technologies or sometimes we call it as a web technologies and they are one, one of the top 3 are what are those like html okay the very first basis of world wide web which is a markup language, hypertext markup language. Second is CSS, which is cascading style sheet in order to uh, provide the styling to your web page. And the third most popular or the core of this web technologies or a worldwide web technologies is JavaScript. Okay. This is the foundation or the core for the web technologies. And as we speak, I mean, 2023, that is what uh, currently as of May, 98% of the websites in the world are currently using JavaScript for their client side behavior. Okay. For managing the client side of the programming language. Again, there is because this web technologies, there is always a client side of a programming and there is also a server side. Okay. That is what your request response cycle is or the client server architecture is. So now in order to understand that 98% of the websites currently use JavaScript, that is how JavaScript is popular. Uh, we'll come to that. Who says it? Now, this is according to w 3 text Okay, w 3 textcom If you go to this website, according to them, they have uh, listed that most popular client side programming language is JavaScript, which means 98.7% of the web pages currently in the world are using JavaScript. So imagine just learning this particular or a single programming language would put you into a very good position in order to learn the entire full stack development and at the same time, predominantly the client side programming language. All right. So let's proceed further and see, I was talking about the survey being done, right? Why is this a most popular programming language? Now, according to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey as of 2022, you see JavaScript says 65.36 percentage of the developers say that this programming language or the technology is most popular or something that they want to learn or something that they are working on as well okay and then comes html and css which is 55 percent and then there is sql which is 49.43 percent then there is python okay if you see these are if you go for the top four it 
the JavaScript stands at the very first position. So this is again one of the reason that you should be learning JavaScript with more depth. All right. So just learning like any other programming language is not enough. You need to master this programming language. If you ask me what is the one programming language I need to master first, I would suggest JavaScript. Okay, because there is no website or there is no web app or the uh, android app or uh, or for that matter ios app which is not using javascript okay there are hardly any so every technology now in revolves around javascript so now now as a part of the career development now i know this programming language is most popular and at the same time uh, it's substantiated by some of the websites that we have given references to but as a career, as a career in, in, in the IT or the information technology, what will I do when I learn this technology? What, can, what is the possibility that I can be uh, playing a role of? Okay. Now, what, after mastering this JavaScript, you can become a front-end developer straight away. You can be uh, along with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And there is also some uh, front-end frameworks like React, Vue or Angular. You can become a front-end developer. And at the same time, you can become a backend developer because JavaScript also works closely with other uh, web uh, server side frameworks like you have Express.js and Node.js. If you learn those, because that also requires JavaScript learning, so you can become a backend developer as well. And then, obviously, your if you know front end, back end, obviously you're going to have a full stack developer role that you can play by just learning JavaScript alone. And then you can become a software engineer, web developer, mobile developer, and so on and so forth. Okay, you can take up those roles as a developer and by mastering the JavaScript programming language. Now, with that being said, let's understand a brief history of JavaScript. Why we need to, what was the genesis? What was the, why was there a birth of this JavaScript as a programming language? What was the situation like in those days? In the early 90s that javascript was born at that time okay just imagine a day or or, or or just imagine a time in 90s okay like for example 1991 to 95 period okay that was when the dot-com bubble was just springing up okay that is when the web browser was there their markup language was uh, started by again uh, tim berners lee and then the the web technologies has slowly started to begin okay internet boom was there at that time at the very beginning the html and css were the only uh, thing that made up the web page okay it was very uh, static web pages okay like yellow pages or something like that and it would not have any interactivity or dynamic nature of the web missing okay so because of that missing what happened was brendan ike okay he was the founder or he was the creator of javascript in the year 1995 and at that time web pages were only static so dynamic behavior was completely missed out that is what i stated and because of that they needed a programming language which could add some interactivity or some dynamic behavior to the programming language or uh, to the web page all right and at the very beginning the javascript was called a live script okay and it was all started at netscape corporation if you remember if i mean uh, the very first history if you know the browser uh, netscape was a very first uh, browser mosaic and uh, netscape were the very early uh, browsers that were started and were in use during the early days of uh, internet Okay, and at that time, the JavaScript was called a live script. It was not JavaScript. Why they become JavaScript? Because at that point in time, like in the uh, mid '90s, Java was the very popular programming language. So what Brandon was thought uh, thinking of is, if we add something to Java, then obviously because of the popularity of the Java as a programming language, even JavaScript might also gain the popularity that was the logic behind it instead of live script it was again renamed to javascript okay and it has nothing to do with java mind you guys so it is just because java was most popular then then it was it, it it thought it gave a thought that 
just adding a Java or prefixing that to a Java and then writing script that would give the immense popularity. Okay, and that and that was it. It it really gave a popularity, and then <coughs> it became a very popular programming language during the dot com boom, and that is how what we see JavaScript now. It is still the most popular from the nineteen ninety five to all the way today. It is still the, it it still holds that position. Now, with that being said, now let's understand uh, what is JavaScript actually. Okay. Now, if if we see a single statement again, there is a lot of keywords here. Just to let you know, JavaScript is a lightweight, interpreted, just in time, compile, high level, prototype based, dynamic typed, supporting object oriented programming with a first class function. Now, in order to understand what JavaScript is, we need to understand these terminologies like what is meant by lightweight what is meant by interpreted rather than compiled and how is just in time compiled is different from a compiled programming language and why is this called a high level not a low level programming language so all this will will take just a, a, a little bit understanding of what each of these words mean now if we go to lightweight what is what is meant by lightweight so understand that by design JavaScript uses a very small memory imprints. Okay, it, it uses a very small memory imprints and very easy to implement. And also, uh, like a plain English language, it is a very, very simple in syntax and semantics. Okay, like like other programming languages that are lightweight are like basic basic is also a programming language, which is said to be very lightweight. All right. And then it is also called as interpreted programming language. Now, whenever we say a programming language is interpreted, which means this programming language is run without compiling it. Okay. So, which means you do not have to compile this programming language. Rather, it's just interpreted programming language. So, what it means is it is, it is one where the instructions are uh, not directly executed by the target machine. All right. So instead, you you read and execute like some other programming language. All right. Now, at the same time, if you want to give me, uh, uh, I mean, just to give you another programming language which is still uh, said to be interpreted is like Python, very popular. Okay. It is also a very popular interpreted programming language whereas c and c++ are compiled programming languages all right so now uh, i i'll show you that part as well where we can say uh, we can go ahead if you go back to refer to our javascript notes again there is also a section where we are going to talk about uh, in a tabular format what is the difference between interpreted and uh, just in time or a compiled programming language you can go ahead and uh, just check it for yourself but in a net net, just understand that it is not compiled. It is interpreted programming languages like the Python as well. All right. And then this, this is a just in time compiled. Again, understand that compiled programming language is different from just in time compiled programming language. When you say just in time programming language, which means it involves compilation during the execution of the program. All right. So whenever the program is executed at that time itself, it would be compiled. OK, it is a faster compilation. That is the reason it is called just in time. Just in time uh, is a literal. You can you can say that at at the time of the execution of the program, this is going to be compiled rather than before the execution. That is the um, men, that is why we call it as uh, just in time compiled. And uh, also understand that uh, this may consist of the source code translation, but more commonly the bytecode translation to a machine level language. So whenever I, I'll come to that when we when we talk about uh, uh, a web browser, where like for like for example a Chrome, Chrome is a web browser which uses a V8 JavaScript engine. When we understand that engine. During our discussion, you'll I'll show how 
the JavaScript is being run by a browser. All right, that is where you will understand that um, what is meant by compile, it will convert into bytecode and all that. We'll, we'll see that. And at the same time, it is a high level programming language. Now, when you say it as a high level programming language, it means it has a higher level of abstraction from the machine language. What it means is uh, rather than dealing with uh, like registers, if you if you if you have come across uh, microprocessor programming languages, OK, so like mu p or anything where you you work with directly the registers, the memory addresses and call stacks and all that here, you don't have to worry about all those nitty gritties of the hardware part. What you need to know is it will be a high level programming language that will be dealing with like variables, arrays or loops, functions. So these kind of uh, uh, data structures or, or the keywords of a programming language where this is going to used, be used is, is a high level programming language. Okay. So these are some computer concepts that you are going to always see in the high level programming languages. And another example of this high level programming language other than JavaScript is again, Python is a high level programming language, C, C++, Java, they're all high level programming languages. All right. And then uh, uh, we, we can say it as a prototype based again, prototype based programming language. What it means is it is a style of object oriented programming language where you will have a classes, you will have instance of a class, there is an object and all that being created because um, in which the classes are not explicitly defined here, okay, but rather derived by adding properties and methods to the instance of another class, all right. So that is what a prototype based, again, uh, this is uh, um, um, at the very beginning of the course. So I don't want to go deep into what prototype based when we understand the classes, functions and all that, we will we'll go deep into it and try to understand what it means. But for now, just understand that it is, um, it is a type of a style allows the creation of objects without first defining the class. That is what it means. All right. Now, dynamic type, again, there is a dynamic typing and uh, the other opposite of that is statically typed okay so when we say a programming language is a dynamically typed programming language which means the interpreter assigns a variable at a runtime okay at a runtime and most dynamic programming languages are dynamically typed which means the dynamic languages are frequently sometimes they're refer referring to it as a scripting languages as well all right so again um, JavaScript, Python, Ruby and all and even PHP. Okay, they are all dynamically typed programming languages. And yeah, again, you know, object oriented programming language, which is all uh, in short, we call it as OOPS or OOP object oriented programming. And this object pro oriented programming, what happens is in this approach in a programming where the data is en encapsulated within the objects. Okay, we, we have something called as encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, all those concepts of object oriented programming will come into place when we say a programming language is a object oriented programming language. All right. So, and again, first in class is what first in class, whenever we say a programming language is a first in class programming language, which means uh, it is said to have the first class functions. Okay. First class functions when the function in that language is treated like any other variable. So uh, again, this you will be understanding better when we see uh, some concepts in, in uh, Python related to arrow fun in, in JavaScript related to arrow functions and other things. We'll see that. Okay. But for now, just understand that this is what JavaScript is. And also, it is the most popular programming language. It is the core technology of the World Wide Web along with HTML and CSS. And this can be used in server side programming as well as uh, as well as the client side programming. And JavaScript also helps to build a lot of libraries that we utilize like React library, which is used for user interfaces. And it's the most popular as well. OK, now <clears throat> with that being said, what will happen now is Let's understand uh, the 
for any programming language, there is a standardization created. Like for example, ANSI has a standard for C programming language, right? In the same way, Java uh, um, JavaScript has something called as ECMAScript standard. It follows ECMAScript standard. What is ECMA stands for? ECMA stands for European Computer Manufacturers Association. This is the organization that has put across certain uh, uh, script or standardization, which is called as ECMA script standard. All right. And now this is the ECMA International. It's again a non-profit organization that will be uh, setting the standard. And at the same time, JavaScript conforms, conforms to this standard. So it, it adopts or it, it has adopted this standard and it has adhered to that standard so that universally whoever uses the JavaScript, they are following the ECMAScript standard. And at the same time, this standard documentation or standardized documentation is maintained by ECMAScript. And the latest one is ECMA 262. Okay, 262 is a document like let me show you that so that just uh, uh, just to let you know what it is. If you observe, this is a ECMA script standard ECMA hyphen international dot org. This is the URL that you can refer to. And this standard defines the ECMA script 2022 general purpose programming language. And in that, if you go to the actual documentation right you can you can download it for yourself or you can view it in html and if i view it in html it contains all this documentation related to javascript which follows the ecmascript standards okay so nothing fancy about it not, uh, not to worry for you at this point in time but this is just for your information purpose that you understand that like ansi has a standard for set for uh, C, that is also a standard that we follow for JavaScript, which is nothing but ECMAScript standard. Okay. The documentation is 262, which is the latest one. That is the 13th edition, June 2022. That is when this documentation has been created. And you can go ahead and refer to what changes have been done, what is the revision history and everything. And this is the standard that JavaScript follows. All right. Now, with that being said, Let's understand what happens when we work with JavaScript. All right. So understand that because JavaScript is running on a browser, browser in the sense you have a lot of browsers currently, like, for example, the most popular one is Google Chrome. Google Chrome is a browser provided by Alphabet company, which is a mother mother company of Google. All right. And there is also a Microsoft Edge. Again, that is provided by Microsoft. That is also a browser. There is also a Mozilla, which is provided by Firefox as an organization. There is a Safari a browser, which is provided by, again, Apple as an organization. Now, every browser has got a particular engine, we call it as, which is called as JavaScript engine. So what this does, like, for example, in case of Chrome, v8 is the name of the engine which the chrome uses is being developed by uh, obviously google is the most used javascript engine okay google chrome and many other uh, chrome based browser use it now now let me tell you this is just for your information purpose only but we will go and understand how this engine helps in execution of javascript okay but for now just understand that v8 engine is from google and currently the google chrome uses the v8 engine now what is this engine and everything we'll see that very soon and again spider monkey spider monkey is again a javascript engine which is developed by mozilla for use in firefox firefox is again a browser by a company called Mozilla Foundation. Again, this uh, is a non-profit kind of an organization. And this is also a most popular uh, browser. And then there is JavaScript Core, which is Apple's engine, which is provided in the Safari browser. Okay, Safari browser, which is available in Mac OS. This particular engine called JavaScript Core is being built by Apple. And then there is 
Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge, which are from the organization Microsoft itself, and they have an engine called Chakra. Okay, Chakra is the name of the JavaScript engine, which is developed by Microsoft. All right. Now, with that being said, let's understand um, JavaScript and V8 engine. How does they work in a browser? So V8 engine executes in five steps, guys. Okay. There are five steps involved in executing a V8 engine. Now, understand that. Why do we require an engine? And what is this engine? Engine is nothing but it will help you to read the JavaScript code from your program, parses it, converts it into a byte code, and then shows your output and supplies it to the uh, CPU and shows the output on your browser back again. Okay, whenever there is a um, uh, client and server interaction happens. This is what it does in a nutshell. And always remember that any JavaScript engine always resides in the browser memory. Okay, the browser only has this engine. You don't need to install any separate software in order to run JavaScript. Okay, your browser is the tool that you can utilize in order to execute a JavaScript code. All right, now initial environment in the host so what it happens is firstly you initialize the environment in the host okay and then what it contains it contains your source code okay your source code is there that is there it might be a standalone javascript uh, code or it might be embedded in your html file or it might be there as a part of other programming language what it happens is you feed the source code to the engine the engine then compiles the javascript code and convert it into a byte code okay it will not convert into an uh, into a machine link la machine language code because that is the reason this is a interpreted programming language not a compiled programming language it is just does what it does is just in time compilation now once the byte code is generated this byte code what it contains it contains zeros and ones all right that is what the byte code is and that byte code is then interpreted and executed all right and that would be provided to the browser uh, to the cpu now at the same time there will be some complex uh, byte codes okay which can be optimized or for a better performance what happens optimize some of the byte code for better performance like you you generated a byte code and now in order to optimize it you again use a certain uh, optimizer where it will again compile and execute once it is done it will de-optimize it and generate the byte code back and this will be fed to the cpu for further processing this is what the v8 engine does on the browser now, if you if you put it in a pictorial way, this is how it looks. Like for example, there is a source code. This this will be initially this this all will happen in your browser, guys. This is all the browser behind the scene, which contains a V8 engine as a part of your Google Chrome. All right. So your source code is there, which might be your ja containing the JavaScript code, and it will feed to a browser. The browser reads the source code. Okay, and here. The baseline compiler will compile and convert that into a byte code. A byte code, if it is more complex, then it will be converted for better performance. It will be again optimized through a turbo fan. This is an optimizer. Okay. Again, it will be converted and then the binary code will be fed to the um, um, fed back and that will be given to the CPU. But at the same time, if there is no optimization needed or, or refinement is needed, what happens? The compiler takes the bytecode, bytecode is fed to the interpreter, interpreter directly converted to the binary and give it to the CPU for further processing. This CPU might be on your client side or if it sends to the server side, it will happen there as well. All right. So this is how the JavaScript V8 engine works in the browser. All right. So, so far, guys, what we have seen is some of the important concepts here. Okay. One is what is JavaScript and how it is utilized and run on your browser and different kinds of uh, engines exist 
javascript uh, engines exist in each browser and they help you to convert and read the javascript pass the javascript convert into the bytecode and feed that to your cpu and then process it further all right now let's understand just to give you a snapshot of what are the most popular or in demand or uh, browsers now currently the global share held by the browsers as of year 2022 the chrome for android is 38.58 percent okay then there is a chrome which is again uh, 100.3 which is 21.64 safari is almost close to 15 percentage of the market share and if i go ahead and add this chrome right chrome for android chrome we are using for the desktop or chrome for the iphone and then there is a chrome 94 if you combine almost like close to 60 70 percent of the market share is captured by the google chrome okay and rest all is like safari edge firefox and all they are uh, holding the next market share the immediately after the chrome the most popular is safari okay from the apple because mac users tend to use safari uh, as the browser so that is where it is occupying like 15 percent of the market share this is according to uh, statista.com okay that's the website that is referred here and put across this uh statistics related to the market share global market share for the browser now <coughs> let's let's understand uh, something in relation to a english grammar a kind of an analogy all right uh, so we are trying to compare javascript and other technologies to a english grammar now let's let's see this what is this statement says a football player in yellow jersey is kicking the ball so what 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 it contains a football player player is a noun in yellow jersey something that describes the noun is a adjective okay so yellow becomes an adjective and then jersey is kicking the ball kicking playing flying these are the verbs okay something that describes uh, the action of the noun is a verb so in this statement there is a noun there is an adjective and there is a verb in word now if we take the top three technologies of world wide web there is html there is css and javascript so now let's see how they are now html will become the noun so you can say the noun is kind of a html all right and then css something that describes the html okay like like for example if there is a browser browser contains a heading h1 tag h1 tag if i want to make it a uh, a green color or yellow color or orange color then that color that design or uh, styling is done by css okay so that will describe the that will provide some description or styling to the uh, adjective uh, styling to the html then css will become an adjective now there is a verb where that is kicking so verb javascript is the verb okay that is the reason the javascript adds the dynamism or dynamic nature of the web page is done by the javascript okay that is the reason this is more of a verb in nature so this is just to give you an analogy between javascript and the english language to understand to make you understand in a simple uh, terms all right with that being said what we need to do is so we know um, we have seen javascript we have done uh, certain things in javascript but also we have certain question related to what can javascript do that might flash your mind and say like html uh, what it does it will define the structure of the web page again css what it does it defines the styling of the web page now javascript what else it can do to a web page okay so here are some of the awesome things that javascript can do all right so what are the make the web pages interactive underline this statement this word interactive is very key nature of javascript what is meant by interactive there are certain examples we can look at like show and hide some information by click of a button you might have seen by clicking certain button you might show up a pop-up window or yeah you might show up a, a menu 
okay so that can be done using javascript and at the same time the color okay the change the color of the button when the mouse is hover over it so whenever there is a button you uh, 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 you ho hover the mouse over that button then the color changes okay that can be done using css and more advanced animation can be done through javascript again uh, a carousal what it means is a slide window i'll show you these examples in a while but just understand that the slide on the home page like a banner or anything that can be done using javascript zooming and zoom out of an image can be done through javascript displaying a timer or a countdown can also be done on a web page using javascript playing the audio video can be done on a javascript along with the audio and video tag of the html and there is an animation or a drop down hamburger menu all that can be done using javascript just to give you some examples i'll show you the live examples in some of the websites okay just to help you understand more uh, perfectly okay now this is what a flipkart.com okay this is the website that flipkart has now if you observe this guys this is a carousal okay this can be done uh, this carousal banner can be done using javascript you can do that all right and then uh, a sliding automatically happens all that can be done and by click of a button you are showing certain uh, more elements that are available okay that can be done using javascript all right and 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 let's say uh, if i click here uh, let's say this so what it contains this is a camera and if i hover the mouse over it and if you see i can see the zoom out and zoom in this can also be done using javascript guys okay so this what what you are seeing this functionality here to zoom the image and see this can be done by javascript and again uh, this is amazon.in this is again a website if you go to let's say today's deals okay i'm just showing you certain things what javascript can do okay some features some uh, something to show you like for example if you see here guys what you see here is a, a boat blockbuster deal on headphones and speakers but there is a, a countdown here like 49 seconds 49 minutes is this deal is available so this kind of timer what you see here if i click on that uh, let's say the timer is going on here if i click on this so if you observe this kind of timer thing you can also do it in javascript all right so the countdown or so many days are remaining for the deal so all those can be set using javascript all right so what you have seen uh, did you do, do you guys understand this yes sir okay yes, sir. super yes, sir. good <clears throat> so now this is a hamburger menu also now what is this hamburger menu if you see this uh, on your uh, top i'll i'll try to zoom it a little bit just uh, so so what you see here this is called a hamburger menu okay it, it looks like a three slices of bread which are top of that and that is the reason this is called a hamburger menu and if i click this hamburger menu a menu opens okay so this kind of uh, and the moment the menu is opened i can see this area being a little bit darked out okay this can also be done using javascript all right so what i have shown a uh, demonstrated to you just now by using some live examples is to show what capabilities a javascript has in terms of making the website more interactive all right so what the next one so what else you can do you can create websites and mobile apps obviously that is understood and you can uh, the developers can go ahead and create uh, many javascript libraries and frameworks are currently exist and you can go ahead and utilize those libraries in order to create uh, awesome websites and mobile apps and also javascript has got many front end frameworks okay so or the libraries you can say frameworks and libraries like react or react native so now this this react is a is a front-end javascript library okay uh, it was basically developed by facebook now it is meta so now that was the company that has created this javascript ui library it is by far the most uh, f popular ui library currently uh, on 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 the web web development uh, sphere 
and then comes the angular angular is again uh, a java uh, is a javascript based and also typescript it also utilizes the typescript as well and this is also a very uh, popular front end framework and then there is a view view is also a very popular front end framework that is be utilizing the javascript programming language by far these are the top 3 okay these are the top 3 front end frameworks that you can see uh, in in the developing world now currently then what happens there are a few examples like for example uh, you might see so where else these these are going to be used okay what are the live examples now for that paypal paypal is again a very popular website that uses the javascript even linkedin uses the javascript netflix uses javascript uber uses javascript so all these most popular websites are currently using javascript as we speak all right and then along with creating websites and mobile apps what javascript does is it can help you to build web servers okay so all the server side applications you can build even using javascript you don't need any other programming language like java or python or php to to in order to run the web service or build the server side applications you don't need you just need javascript now using the javascript you can also do the server side application development which builds this the simple web servers and for that the most popular backend infrastructure is node.js as this is the most popular um, uh, uh, backend infrastructure that you would need in order to create a web servers okay again this also utilizes the javascript then uh, you might have seen the game development okay you can do the game development also using javascript and then there is a presentation like if you see this particular uh, uh, library which is called reveal js it is used to build the slide deck like for example you have your microsoft powerpoint right in the same way you can create the slides or deck uh, using reveal reveal js and uh, one of the examples is slide.com if you go to slide.com this entire website is built using the javascript library called reveal js even this is also very popular and again you can create uh, uh, you can also work and program the flying robots okay flying robots like drones or quadcopters we call it as quadcopters come with a simple operating system that make possible to install node.js so you can install node.js on your quadcopters and all that will again in indirectly you are utilizing javascript in order to program your drones or quadcopters okay uh, and that is how the javascript helps you in in a lot of a lot of variants that you can see building websites making interactive uh, websites again building gaps server-side programming game development presentation online presentations using the reveal js and flying robots and all that can be done using javascript now uh, in order to demonstrate or just to make it more appealing or just to refer to you something importance that adds value to javascript is atwood's law atwood's law is is basically in the year 90 in, in the year 2007 jeff atwood and who is this jeff atwood jeff atwood is a founder of stack overflow okay he was the my found one of the founders of stack overflow and he made a very popular quote for his love for javascript what it says is and that is came to be referred to as atwood's law and what that law says okay what it says is any application that can be written in javascript will eventually be written in javascript what it means is if there is a possibility that you can write a program or a web page or a website in javascript alone then in some years down the line it will definitely be written in javascript again okay what it means is it shows the popularity of javascript and the worldwide adoption of javascript as a programming language in order to build more dynamic interactive and reactive websites on the 
World Wide Web. Okay, that is how you can substantiate that the popularity of JavaScript. Now, now it is now the time comes. We have seen so far the introduction to JavaScript, its popularity, what it encompasses, and everything. Now let's try to indulge into what is known as JavaScript installation and execution. Okay, how do what what all we need to run JavaScript as a learner or as a beginner? Uh, what softwares I need and everything. So this is a single statement. What it says is getting started with JavaScript is easy. All you need is a web browser. That's all. Okay, you don't need Visual Studio Code. You don't need anything for learning as a beginner. What you need is just a web browser, like a simple web browser, like a Google Chrome. That's all. You don't have to install anything because as you as we have seen already, that web browser comes along with itself a JavaScript engine. In case of Google Chrome, it is V8 engine. In case of uh, uh, Firefox Mozilla, there is Spider Monkey, so so and so forth. And Chakra in case of Microsoft Edge, all that. With that being said, this is the only software that is recommended for learning as a beginner, which is a web browser. Now, there might also some of the uh, folks you might uh, also uh, say, sir, what what along with if I need an IDE or into integrate uh, integrate development environment that I need. So what what is the best thing that you suggest? The best thing I suggest is Visual Studio Code, by far the most popular uh, IDE that is available in the market. And because it is developed by Microsoft and at the same time, it is open source. Okay, you can you can go ahead and freely available to you. Just go ahead and download the uh, Visual Studio Code. For that, what you need to do is just go to VS Code download okay so you will go to this url what it says is code.visualstudio.com on this url pick up your operating system whether it is windows or mac or linux and depending on that just download that and install it for it. it's very simple okay just go to the code.visualstudio.com slash download this is the url and, and download and install the visual studio code it is a free and built on open source okay in and also it is integrated with git okay git git integration with the github you can put your source code all that happens using visual studio code it is integrated very well because it it, it is again its parent company is still microsoft whose github's parent company is also microsoft so they have a strong integration there so obviously it helps <clears throat> now, with that being said, let's go ahead and see the very first program. Okay, by this I, I'll conclude. Let's go that and do it. Now, let's say I have this Google Chrome installed. So, where shall I code now? So, what I need to do is go to the developer tools on 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 the right top corner there are three dots that appear click on that and you will have something called as more tools okay go to more tools and then go to the developer tools the shortcut for that is control plus shift plus i you can do this as well or you can go to this top right corner click on more tools and then go to developer tools all right just click on that and the moment you go to the developer tools, what happens is usually it will come on the right side or the bottom side docked. So what you can do is there is an option here. The moment you see this, what I want you to do is on your top right, there is a dock side you can prefer. Either you want to dock, undock it or put it on your uh, left side or right side. Uh, like if you have put it on the left side, it will come on the left side. And if I... Uh, dock it on the right side it will be available or i can dock it in the bottom as well okay like this but what i prefer is usually to undock it undock it what will happen is it will come outside of that browser window 
I, I can I can use control plus zoom. I can zoom it a little bit to increase the font. And this is what the Chrome Dev Tools would look like. And now you can go to this settings. If you like the dark theme, you can uh, go to the preferences. If you want the dark theme, you can use it. Or if you want the light theme, it will be appearing in the uh, white color. So you can use this, whatever your preference is. I personally would prefer the uh, a dark theme. So what I do is select uh, on this, go to this settings, go to the preferences. And inside the appearance, you have something called as theme. I select dark theme. Okay. So just select it and now inside this console tab there are uh, there, uh, there are multiple tabs here there is an element tab there is a console tab source tab network tab and there are many others as well okay so what we need for now is working on the console tab okay just go to the console tab and this is where i am going to enter the very first line of code in javascript and that is the hello world line which is the hello world for javascript would look something like this console dot log open and close parenthesis inside that put the string in the quotes either single quotes or double quotes single quotes hello world and if i press enter this is where the output is going to be shown okay what you did just now is executed the very first line of code in JavaScript on your web browser using the dev tools. Okay. Um, and meanwhile, what I suggest you to uh, go to the uh, skillsam.com inside that you have something called as JavaScript notes. If you go to skillsam.com, right, guys, go to the JavaScript. And here technology notes are there. Just click on the JavaScript notes. You will have these JavaScript notes. What we have done today is introduction, installation. Okay. And uh, this is something that you can go ahead and refer to these notes, whatever we have learned today and perfect your skills there. Okay. And tomorrow, what we are going to take up is again some further important topics in, in order to learn our entire uh, JavaScript okay all right guys thank you you guys have a good night see you tomorrow at 8 p.m again all right thanks